Tim Crane was an academic at UCL from 1990 to, to 2009, and since uh, September 2009 he's been Knightsbridge Professor of Philosophy at Cambridge. His works include the history of the mind-body problem and um, elements of the mind. He's, uh, one of the things he's most famous for is this philosophical duel with um, David Papineau, who we had earlier this term. So um, without further ado, Professor Tim Crane. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for the invitation. Um, it's nice to be part of a duel with um, David Papineau, especially when he isn't in the room. So I feel now I have an advantage over him, because I can tell you all these things that are true, and I won't have him, him uh, shouting back at me and telling me why I'm wrong. Um, so Ben asked me to talk on the subject, why the mind isn't physical, and that's something I, I believe myself, that the mind isn't physical. <coughs> and um, as you all know, those of you who came to David Papineau's talk, but he's a, he's a resolute believer that the mind is physical. But first of all, this being philosophy, I'm going to tell you what I mean by saying the mind is or is not physical. Um, and, um, um, and then I'm going to say a little bit about why, what I think the, the initial case for saying that it isn't physical is, and then briefly I'll attack the argument that David Papineau and others have, um, have brought. Um, in favour of saying that the mind is physical. So that's, those are the three things I'm going to do. Um, so the first thing I want to say about what I mean by saying the mind is physical. Now, the, we have to get clear about uh, who our opponents are when we're, when we're um, doing philosophy. Um, and I, I, many people who say that the mind is physical, I'm going to call them physicalists, they, they think that their primary opponent is Descartes. Descartes thought, as, as some of you will know, Descartes thought that, um, that the mind, or the soul, is a distinct thing from anything in the material world. Each of us has a soul, and that thing is separate and distinct from uh, anything material. And he had various reasons for thinking this that, um, uh, that I'm not going to go into. But what I want to emphasize is that this is a very specific way of denying that the mind is physical. So if you merely to deny that the mind is physical, in the sense I'm going to explain, isn't to commit yourself to Descartes' view. Descartes had a very particular, a very extreme version of the anti-physicalist view. Um, so when I say the mind isn't physical, I don't mean Descartes' view. If you've never heard of Descartes and you don't know what his view is, you can ignore what I just said. I'm just putting that to one side. Um, now sometimes it's said, so what do I mean, what do I mean by the physical? Now, sometimes it's said that um, the physical just is what exists in space, or what exists in space and time, or as physicists say, in space-time. Uh, if that's what it means for the mind to be physical, then I'm perfectly happy to say the mind is physical, because my mind I take to be a bunch of my own features. I'm a, I'm a person, a human being, and I have uh, mental features and physical features, my mental features are located where I am. Um, so if, if all it takes to be physical is to have a location, then I think my mind is physical and we can all go home. And David Papineau and I can agree. But we don't agree, and so we've got to figure out what it is that we don't agree on. And here the key term is the term physical. Now there's an ordinary everyday understanding of the, of the idea of the physical, where the physical just means something like the material, things that are made out of matter, or something bodily as opposed to mental. Um, as you say, you know, if someone said that they were in a physical relationship, you know that that's something to do with, it's nothing to do with the mind or the spirit, it's something to do with your body. That's, I don't mean physical in that sense. That's, that's an ordinary sense of physical, and uh, that's not relevant to this discussion. What's relevant to this discussion is physical as that term occurs in science. Physical science is a science that attempts to characterize everything in the world in terms of its physical properties and how they behave in accordance with physical law. So the properties of mass, and charge, momentum, velocity, all these physical properties or concepts that characterize things in the physical world. Now, when physicalists say that the mind is, is physical, they mean that it's the mind's nature is entirely determined 
by the physical in that sense, in that scientific sense of the physical. So here's a way to to put it in a sort of um, in a sort of in an image or, 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 or a, um, a thought experiment. So imagine God creating the world. Right? I'm not presupposing the existence of God here. I'm just I'm neutral on, on that. I'm just I'm just talking about. Um, talking about the idea that God is creating the world. Ask yourself the question, what would God have to do in order to create this world exactly as it is? What would he have to create in order to create this world? The physicalist says that all God would have to do to create this world just as it is, is to create its physical nature. That is to say, the atoms and, and molecules and fundamental particles that make up the physical world. Um, that's all he would have to do. God would just have to put all those little bits in motion and set the clock running and the world would be coming to existence. So, those of you who read the Bible, you will know that God created the world in seven days. That's what it says in the book of Genesis. On the physicalist picture, he wouldn't even need two days. He'd just need the first act of creating all the physical matter in the world, and everything else would come for free. And so here's an analogy. What would you have to do to create a beautiful painting? What would you have to do to create a copy of, say, um, the Mona Lisa? On the, the analogous view to the physicalist view, all you would have to do would be to put all the paint in, in a particular order. Once you put all the paint in a particular order, then you would have created the Mona Lisa with all its beauty and all its, its refinement and elegance. You wouldn't have had to have done anything else. You wouldn't have had to have created the painting and then added the beauty as something else. Now that's, that's analogous to what I'm saying about uh, the physicalist view of the world. The physicalist says all that God would have to do to create this world with all its complexity, all its psychological and emotional and artistic and whatever complexity, with all that complexity, all God would have to do would be to just create the physical nature of the world, that is, the microphysical particles, and everything else would come for free. So the question of whether the mind is purely physical is the question of whether that, I, that claim is true. Is it true that everything is determined by the nature of, by the purely physical nature of the world. Um, now, so, God is inessential to all this, that was just a way of characterizing the, the basic idea. So that's the physicalist thesis. The physicalist thesis is that, that everything is determined by its physical nature. To create a copy of this world just as it is, you just have to create its physical nature. Now, that's the claim that I don't think we have any reason to believe. And I don't think that we know that it's true, and I don't think we're obliged to believe it, and I don't think science obliges us to believe it either. Um, so that's what I'm going to that's what I'm going to say next, and what, why why I don't think it's true. Well. In order to say this, I need to say a little bit about what I mean by the mental or the mind. As I said, Descartes thought that um, the mind was a thing in a certain way. It was what he called a substance. The idea of a substance there is the idea of a fundamental thing. And the fundamental things in nature are substances. Um, so, you know, something like, for example, the United Nations is not a fundamental thing in the world. It's a thing that's dependent for its existence on other things. Um, and those things are what, in the traditional philosophical jargon, going back to Aristotle, those things are substances. 